Espion is tiered super low competitively, but this thing's always been one of my favorites to mess around with. It can hit extremely hard with its base 130 special attack, and it also has some good speed to back it up with 110. What makes it even more valuable though is its ability Magic Bounce. This straight up Una reverses status moves and even bounces back hazards like Stealth Rock, which can make for some pretty fun prediction action. Mix in a little setup with Calm Mind if you're feeling extra dangerous, and we've got some solid coverage in things like Stab Psyshock along with Shadow Ball, Power Gem, Alluring Voice, and honestly Espeon just always puts in work and has no business being this low in usage. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Today I can offer you one kitty. Espeon truly does not get the respect it deserves, and that is what I am here for. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm on my way to 400k, you can be part of the journey. And I first want to give a huge shout out to my favorite sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Look, if you're somehow on the internet without a VPN, you are messing up. A VPN is a virtual private network that not only keeps your data safe while you're browsing the internet, but it can do some other pretty sweet stuff. When you connect your device to the internet, Surfshark is encrypting your information and anyone trying to snoop on you won't be able to see anything you're doing. But the true fun honestly comes with the fact that you can just travel the world virtually in just one click. It can easily access region blocked content by selecting any server and you're good to go. Changing your virtual location comes with my favorite perk of being able to access a whole new library of content from other countries. Look, American Netflix gets boring, so you can literally just pop on the Surfshark, connect to a Japan server, and unlock all new shows and movies. You can also bypass price discrimination, like when you're searching for flights or hotels. Websites, they often give you pricing based off of your location, so you can literally just turn on the Surfshark VPN and guarantee you're seeing the best deals. One of the best parts is that with one subscription, you can use unlimited devices. You can legit share an account with as many people as you want, and pay less than the price of like a stick of gum. You can even get three extra months for free if you give it a try using my code Hayden at checkout. Just go ahead and click that link in the description if you're interested. I promise you will not be disappointed. And let's go ahead and get back into the video. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Electros. Buddy is looking suspiciously tube-shaped, and I have a Frostlass who is here to mix some stuff up and be annoying. So first of all, I figure this thing probably volt switches or something. I'm just gonna take this opportunity to go for the spikes, sprinkle down some Legos, and we're feeling good. It turns out, however, we've got a physical Electros here with the crunch. Doesn't quite knock me down my Focus Sash, but it is gonna do a lot, and then Frostlass is like, hey, don't do that again. I do get the Cursed Body, and at this point, I kind of figure this is probably something like a Coil Electros, which is pretty lit. I'm just going to go for the Destiny Bond, because if they end up wanting to knock me out, I'm going to take them with me. And I'm totally down with the free trade there. They do go for the Wild Charge, and that is going to work out perfectly. Frostlass always, as a lead, kind of puts the pressure on a potential taunt, so they can't set up. And then they see the kill, and then I'm like, yeah, no, you're coming with. So the Destiny Bond works out. Electros going down is actually pretty solid because that thing is generally just annoyingly defensive and we love to see it. So we've got an empty battlefield, 9 out of 10 times I'm going into Scarf Star Raptor here just because I can pivot or if it's a good matchup I can just take the opportunity to grab some damage. Turns out in comes the Garchomp. So this thing is has the potential to set up here which is what I'm kind of worried about but also it could be trying to set up some Stealth Rock, and you already know when the Espeon's around, we're thinking not today, partner. So, I'm gonna go for that pivot with the U-turn, and Espeon's kind of my best switch here, because what I'm also worried about is a potential scale shot. Now, if this thing gets a speed boost, it's gonna be fast, and it's gonna be bad for me. But, I'm actually Mirror Herb on the Espeon, which will allow me to copy that speed boost, be faster, and then do stuff. But it turns out, they're just gonna go for that Stealth Rock and then ends up giving me some Stealth Rock. So I am totally fine with that. Magic Bounce doing its Magic Bounce and bullshit. And at this point, Espeon is in a pretty decent position where I'm actually not quite able to grab the KO here with the Draining Kiss unless I have a few things going for me. So first of all, I gotta go for the Calm Mind. Now, the main reason is to be able to Oko the Chomp if I can commit the Terra Fairy. And then thinking for the future, their only thing faster is gonna be Salazzle. And if I have a plus one in special defense, I can actually likely take a Sludge Bomb after a nice little heal from the Draining Kiss. So, it turns out they actually do have the coverage with Crunch, and that is either a low roll, because Crunch has like a 50% chance to kill there, or it's not going to be max attack adamant. So, at this point, I'm really feeling like I definitely, first of all, need this Draining Kiss to kill, and uh, it honestly seems like Espeon has a nice little, little chance to get ourselves a body bag action going. So, Looking at this damage here, I'm figuring, you know what, I'm just going to go for that Terra Fairy with the Draining Kiss. Should be able to knock this thing out, get myself potentially enough health in the process uh, to be able to live a super effective attack 
now that I'm Terraferry, from the Salazzle in the back. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the heart on my head. There's never been a more adorable Espeon in the damn world. And uh, we are full on aesthetic out here. I go for that draining kiss, which is now stab boosted. With that calm mind boost, Espeon's looking solid. Are able to knock out the dragon. And we also get ourselves a nice little chunk of health back, which is looking like uh, at plus one special defense, a sludge bomb does like a max of like 80% to me now. So on the revenge switch, they are going to go into the Salazzle here. This thing's absolutely serving and I am a little bit scared. However, the spikes paired with the stealth rock does like nearly half to the thing, which is amazing. And also there's a situation where if this thing isn't plus speed nature, Espeon actually just straight up outspeeds. And that is what's going to happen. Buddy should be running timid because modest is not going to allow you to outspeed the Espeon. And now we're in absolute full form because Espeon's the fastest mod on the field and we seem to have coverage for pretty much everything. Now, the only thing that looks like on paper can take an attack is going to be this little string cheese fella. The Golden Go comes in. And while obviously both of my stabs that they've seen are not very effective, I do have the coverage with the Shadow Ball and especially at plus one special attack that definitely knocks this thing out. And that is a fun sight to see because my dude did not put the respect on Espeon's name that this thing deserves. And now you're paying the price out here. Now they decide to go into the Breloom who is kind of just gonna be breakfast for us because there's, I mean, Mach Punch can't do much. This thing cannot spore me. I just outspeed, go for that Psy Shock. And of course, it does just take care of the Breloom. No Focus Sash is intact, of course, because of the hazards. The Stealth Huck even helping with a little bit more chip. But honestly, our base 130 special attack with a Combine, we don't even need the help, baby. Now, the final Pokemon is gonna be the Greninja, which actually, I lied. If this thing's jolly or timid, it does outspeed me as well. But it needed to be like a physical with Gunk Shot. Turns out, they're just gonna run. They don't have the coverage and Espeon uh, spares them, at least that time. So some listen, sometimes you gotta come out there with the body bag perfect Espeon showcase, but in this next match, we have our work much more cut out for us, as we have an insane matchup here, and honestly, quite the scary looking team over here, but we're going to try our little Espeon best. Our best Beyond, if, if I'll, I'll leave. So at this time, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Great Tusks. The Tusks don't even look that great, call him Mid Tusk. I, of course, have the Frostlass, and it's a pretty solid matchup for me. Of course, I, anytime you have Espeon in the back, they're not going to want to click the Stealth Rock. The, the switch into Espeon's kind of obvious. And at this point, I figure, you know, I could just go for an Ice Beam, get some big damage. But I decide, in the end, to just go for the Spikes. It seems like the Hazards are going to be really useful here. And I can just go ahead and uh, take that initiative. Where they actually end up going for the Knockoff Turn 1, which is honestly a really good middle ground play. Because, you know, the switch into Espeon on a Stealth Rock was obvious there. Uh, but of course, he does hit me for super effective damage. Doesn't quite even knock me down to my sash. But at this point, I just decided to go for the Ice Beam. I feel like I can get some great damage with that, and uh, I don't need to Destiny Bond. Where they actually end up going for the Rapid Spin. They probably expected a potential switch maybe into Espeon that time, or even just a, a, a switch in general to get rid of the spikes, also giving it a speed boost. Would be quite scary. But it doesn't quite happen for him, and now I have a decision to make. I just decide... I'm going to go ahead and get up some more spikes. The only thing that can get hazards away will be the Great Tusk, and you're not going to be spinning on the Ghost today. So they do actually end up going for the Stealth Rock now. They figure if I don't go Espeon early, I probably don't, and that's, it ends up working out. They do get the Stealth Rock up, and uh, no magic bounce in there. But honestly, that is fine, because with the amount of chip that I have from that Ice Beam, easily this thing just goes down now. But also, it's going to be in range to take out later if they do end up switching. And uh, Ice Beam just seems like... A kind of just a solid offensive play here as they do just stay in and we ice beam his ass back to paradox hell so that takes care of one crazy asshole but now we have an even crazier long neck fella here in the raging bolt and this thing is a problem so while the destiny bond seems kind of obvious it also is uh they have the option to go for the thunderclap if i want to get the ice beam damage so i'm gonna end up going for another layer of spikes if i can get three spikes up they do not have a rapid spinner left and that is going to be really good for the late game. But it turns out they're actually going to go for the Terra Fire. Now, the reason you do that is probably just because they call uh, the Ice Beam here. And uh, anytime Raging Bolt is out here, this thing is a threat. While I do get my spikes up, I find myself in trouble because they do not click the Thunderclap, which I kind of expect. And instead, they go for the Calm Mind. So, listen, Raging Bolt is already annoying enough, but with a Calm Mind up and the Terra Fire. This thing is becoming an issue. And also, Frostlass can't really do much. Even if I go for the Shadow Ball here, it's likely they Thunderclap me. 
and Shadow Ball is not even going to do a lot. So I find myself in a little bit of a predicament here. Now, I figure I, I, it's, it's worth my while just to go for a Destiny Bond. If they want to go for something, you know, just like a Thunderbolt or a Dragon Pulse here, if I could grab the KO here, that would be extremely satisfying. But they're not going to go for it. There's really no reason for them not to just stay in and click Calm Mind again. And that's exactly what they do. And now this thing is chilling in the clouds with uh, plus two to both special attack and special defense. It also has the option in priority for the special electric type sucker punch kind of action. And I am frightened. There is one thing that can save me though, and that is if they want to go for a Calm Mind again. I actually have a pretty good plan here. Either a Calm Mind or a Thunderclap here would be ideal. I decide to switch into Espeon, who damn near breaks his neck trying to look up at Buddy's huge ass neck, and it turns out they actually do go for a third combine. So they see basically the win condition being this, uh, this freaking Raging Bolt here. But my Espeon does have that Mirror Herb, which allows me to copy that combine. I come in, immediately steal a combine with that Mirror Herb, and that is actually going to be pretty solid because while they're at plus three, I'm not sitting at plus one. And at this point, if I'm them, I figure they probably go for the Thunderclap here. Eventually, it's going to happen either to that or something like a Draco Meteor. But uh, I decide one of my best, actually, ways to check this is going to be going for the Terra Fairy. Now, Terra Fairy Espeon, not only does it just match Buddy's aesthetic, but it's honestly super useful. Especially in this matchup, because blocking their Dragon moves is going to make it so their only coverage will be electric. So they do go for the Thunderclap there, expecting me to try to grab some damage. But I'm like, you know, no, no. We're going Calm Mind for Calm Mind out here. I decide to go for that, and that actually gives me a great bit of momentum because now I am at plus two to both. Where they're at plus three, uh, the more spadef I can get, the more likely I'm able to take a hit. And I'm like, you know what? There's no reason not to go for a second Calm Mind here. I'm going to go first, and even if they do Thunderbolt, I know that I can take that easily. And uh, the Raging Bolt's like, dude, this is totally fine. I'm literally... Freaking Giraffe Raikou. I'm gonna go for another combine, brings it to plus four in both. And while that seems extremely scary, the reason why Espeon is the perfect answer here is because my coverage with Psyshock hitting this thing on the physical defensive side rather than special is gonna allow me to do a bunch of damage. While I'm able to go for it, does a nice little chunk, and uh, perfectly they actually end up going for another combine. So we've honestly got this thing right where we want it. It literally has plus five to <laughs> special attack and special defense. So uh, at this point, even with the spadef that I have, a thunderclap is honestly going to do a lot, depending on kind of how this thing is trained and when its nature is. But I figure looking at this thing, I'm like, hmm, honestly, I feel like a thunderclap still probably kills me. So in order to avoid that, I'm just going to get another calm mind up. This kind of makes me feel like maybe this thing's only coverage to hit me with will be the thunderclap. So. We got the calmest minds literally on this side of Paldea at this point, and uh, everybody around this battlefield is feeling the effects of the damn meditation going on out here. But even with leftovers recovery, obviously, <laughs> with another calm mind here, I should be able to live yeah, thunder clapping to my cheeks, which uh, does allow me to go for an attack here. We are able to live the priority there, and a Psy Shock is going to take out the Raging Bolt. So that's honestly super ideal. It's kind of the best way for me to get around not being swept by Raging Bolt, because when that thing gets Calm Minds up, it's kind of game over a lot of the time. But we not only take care of one of the bigger threats, but also they use up their Terra, and we're feeling like we're in a pretty good spot. Except, old Danger Noodle over here comes in, this thing is definitely going to be faster, and hit me on the physical side, which is going to allow them to take care of the Espeon, but honestly, I'm totally fine with that. I can kind of use up the Espeon here. It did what it needed to do and came in extremely clutch there, even with that Mirror Herb and everything. So as an Ice Spinner does finish off the SB, we're thankful for what we're able to do there. And now we are still in the game, but also they have a lot of huge threats left. So the work is not done. And at this point, I do at least get a Revenge Switch. And Arcanine is kind of perfect here because as I can come in, I am able to grab a nice little Intimidate and uh, we're looking nice and yellow out here. So I know that at minus one, this thing can't knock me out. Uh, its best coverage is gonna be like Sacred Sword. And also this thing is in a weird position to switch because their remaining Mons do not come in on a Flare Blitz. Being King Gambit, they have Excadrill and a Golden Go. So I am able to take the Sacred Sword nicely, allows me to go for that Flare Blitz, which does take out the Chien Pao. Huge threat out of the way, and Arcanine did its, it totally did its job. While we do take a bunch of damage, especially from the attack and also the recoil, I am in a spot where if I get outsped, I pretty much die here. While I do have the extreme speed, it's not really gonna quite help me out with what they have left. So 
they decide now to bring in the Excadrill. And uh, this thing's in a spot where it actually, I think I was talking shit earlier of them not having rapid spinners left. This thing can totally rapid spin here, getting rid of the spikes and also giving it a speed boost. But if it opts to go for that option, it's gonna just die to a Flare Blitz. So I figure I can't really afford to let this thing rapid spin, mostly just because if this thing at plus one, it's gonna be a problem. So I decided to stay in on the Arcanine while this thing would be useful as a switch into uh, things like potentially King Gambit if it's if it's defined it's really bad but I just decided my best bet is to let Arcanine go down there because now this allows a free switch into I guess not free I paid the Arcanine death but I get the switch coming in safely with the Shaman as at this point I have the coverage with the Earth Power on literally their entire team left so as half of their team is still alive they decide to switch out the Excadrill they're actually going to end up going into Golden Go and I'm thinking holy shit please do not be Air Balloon my little choice specs hedgehog would be in a real bad spot. Turns out it does touch the spike, so it's not floating above the earth power. And also, it is just gonna straight up knock it out. Nobody expects the earth power from the Shaman, but this is actually looking like it's my win condition at this point because Shaman has base 100 in literally everything. And uh, I'm also pretty damn fast. I'm actually faster than the Exedrill here. Unless this thing was somehow choice scarf, I should be able to outspeed here and I kind of... Uh, I could potentially sack the Frostlast to scout here, but I'm like, you know what? Hedgehog is in a spot to bring it home for us. Now, I do outspeed because Sonic go quick, and uh, that's going to take care of their second to last Pokemon. Now, their final Mon, which most people save for the end, is this Supreme Asshole over here, <laughs> the King Gambit. This thing comes in, it's actually going to get that Supreme Overlord, which gives it a boost for every Fallen Comrade, which is five of them. So... We're in a position now where a Sucker Punch from this thing has so much power, and pretty much my entire team dies from that. But the only thing I can do here is hope that I have enough natural bulk to be able to take it. They go for the Sucker Punch, and Shaman is the absolute beast that's able to live it just barely. Allows me to fire off an Earth Power, and that is going to finish off the game. Honestly, I kind of thought that we just lost to King Gambit Sucker Punch, but you forget how bulky the little hedgehog is. It can literally live a five allies fainted Supreme Overlord Sucker Punch from an adamant King Gambit with black glasses, which is pretty wild. And that is why, here's a fun fact, Shaman is actually not based off of a hedgehog, it's actually based off of a goat. 